Hello YouTube, this is Mo from Tutorials.eu and welcome to my first YouTube tutorial. I've been helping Dennis with the C-Sharp and some of the Unity content that you've seen on the channel in the past few months. I really hope that you'll enjoy this video, which will be about DLL files and how we can create our own using C-Sharp. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Have you ever seen an error like this one before? Well, you probably did when trying to run some video games on your computer. And you solved it by copying some DLL files that you found online. So what are those DLL files exactly? DLL stands for Dynamic Link Library. A dynamic link library is just a file that contains code and data that can be used by more than one application at the same time. Now, let me tell you about some of the advantages that you'll get if you decide to use a DLL file in your apps. When you have multiple programs that are using the same set of functions or methods, a DLL file can greatly reduce the duplication of code that is loaded onto the disk or memory, which in return will make your application run more smoothly and potentially reduce the hardware requirements it needs. Updates will be a lot easier to apply. When you change the code of a DLL file, you don't have to build or install the whole application again. All you need to do is just replace the old DLL with the newer one that you modified. Now, if you write some general useful functionality like a JSON parser or a networking layer and you make it into DLL, then you can easily deploy it and use it across your different applications. Not only that, but you'll also be able to test it and maintain it as well. That being said, now let's jump to Visual Studio to see DLL files in action. Now in Visual Studio, I'm going to create a new console application project targeting.net framework 5. Now the reason why I created this console application is to actually use it as a testing ground for the DLL file that I'm going to create in a bit. Because when we build a typical c -sharp project like a WPF project or a console application, an executable file will be generated. But to actually create a DLL file, we need to create a class library. By creating a c -sharp class library, we are creating a package that can be included in our project. This package contains code like classes and methods that we can actually use across multiple applications. Now, since a solution can actually contain multiple projects, I'm going to add a new project which is going to be of type class library so I'm going to select that and I'm gonna rename it to something like DLL test now as you can see a new class was created for us in this new class library project and by default it's called class one so I'm gonna rename it to something like math service and now it's asking whether I want to rename the class itself so that it matches the name of the file which I'm going to accept now I'm not planning on creating objects of this class so it's gonna be similar to the math class that we already have in C sharp so I'm gonna mark it as static because it's only going to contain a bunch of static methods so I'm going to define the first static method or class method public static integer since it's going to return an integer and I'm gonna call it divide and it's gonna take int x and int y quick pause in this video you learn something about C sharp and if you want to learn everything there is to know that you need for the fundamentals and to become a real C sharp developer then definitely check out my C sharp masterclass in which you're going to learn all of the things you need to know about C sharp so you're going to learn how to do the basics how to use object oriented programming how to use WPF in order to create your own user interfaces how to use databases how to use link how to create your own games using unity and a lot more so if you want to become a real C sharp developer definitely check out the link in the description below now I'm going to simply return x over y. So as you can see, I did not put any protection code to check if y is zero or not. So I don't actually divide by zero because in general, it's a good practice to leave the error handling to the client or the other developer who's going to use this DLL file. In fact, I'm not going to actually to handle the error. Instead, I'm going to explicitly throw an exception. So I'm going to check if y is zero and if so, I'm going to throw a new exception or a divide by zero exception to be more specific. So this way, whoever uses this DLL 
will have to actually handle this exception. All right, so I'm going to build my class library. And I'm going to check the output by opening the project itself in Windows Explorer. Now, if I navigate to bin debug.net5, inside there I will find the DLL file that I built. So, back to our console application. Under dependencies, I'm going to add a new dependency or package. I'm going to add the DLL file that I just created. So I'm going to click on browse and then I'm going to select the DLL file and click OK. Now under assemblies, we will find a new entry, which is the DLL file that we just created. And we can use it just like any normal package that we imported using the NuGet package manager. So I'm going to write using DLL test and I'm going to remove the hello world and I'm going to call the math service class dot divide and I'm going to pass it the values 20 and 5 and since it's going to return an integer as a result I'm going to store it in an integer called result as well and then I'm going to write console dot write line and I'm going to pass it the result and at the end I'm just gonna write console.read so that the console window doesn't close automatically and I'm gonna run it and as you can see the result is 4 all right guys that's it for this video I really hope that you enjoyed it and if you did please let me know in the comment section below and I hope to see you in the next one